to Food Allergy Canada's Allergy Pals Monthly. I hope you're all having a really great first month back at school. So my name is Julia and I'm so excited to welcome you guys to this month's session. If you weren't here for last time, this is how it works. So we'll talk about a certain topic and have some fun polls, interactive activities, and a question and answer time at the end. We'll be recording the session and we will also be making it available for you to watch afterwards too. If you have any technical difficulties, like I did at the start, we'll try our best to help you if you type your issue in the question box below, just in your GoToMeeting panel. But the best way is to contact GoToWebinar directly. This month's theme will be a fun one, sports and activities with food allergies. I hope everybody's ready. So today's theme, sports and activities with allergies, will be featuring several different ways, several different things. We have some stories that we're going to talk about, some trivia, games, question and answer, slash Q&A, some polls, and more. So guys, our first poll question, out of the following, what is your favorite hobby? So select one of the following. There's drawing, dancing, playing an instrument, video games, and books and movies. All right, let's take a look at how we did. So it looks like, oh, it looks like video games is everybody's favorite. That's really cool. I can get in on that. I love me some self video games. Drawing and painting and books and movies are also very popular, which is great. But it looks like nobody's too fond of playing a musical instrument. I wonder if it's all the practicing. Great job, guys. Okay, so let me give you guys just a little bit of background information on me, the presenter for today's session. So my name is Julia. I'm allergic to peanuts, tree nuts, fish, and shellfish. My hobbies include swimming, reading, and watching sports. My secret talent, I'd say I'm a pretty good actor. I can make a lot of faces. And a talent I wish I had is archery. So, Arch, if at, any of you guys don't know, archery is with the big bow and the big arrow, and you try to hit the bullseye. It's really cool. So another poll question. Get ready. So out of the following sports, which one do you guys like to play the most? Hockey, baseball, gymnastics, basketball, or soccer? I think of all the ones put here, I like to watch, I like to watch baseball the most, go Blue Jays, but I like to play soccer. Ooh, and the answers are very, very even with soccer coming ahead and taking the win with hockey coming in last place. That's crazy. Looks like you guys have such a varying um, ideas of hobbies, which is super cool because then we're all very different, but we're all getting together right now to talk about allergies. Great job, guys. Okay, so, this part's used for the, I want you guys to write your answers in the question and answer box. So can you guys think of any reasons why we need to be careful with our allergies during a sport or activity? So write what you think in the question and answer box and we'll chat about it.
Okay, so one person says food can be used in crafts and activities. That is very true. I know of a lot of people that like to use um, that like to use food in their crafts and activities. Sometimes when you're at a hot, at a soccer game or if you're at any game in the middle of the game, usually parents will take turns by bringing snacks to the game. If anyone could think of anything else, put it down on the put it down on the form. Oh, I like this next one. Hard to have an EpiPen close by. That's very true because when you're at, when you're playing a sport, sometimes it can be a little stressful to where to put your EpiPen. Someone else says you can come in contact with an allergen. That's very true too, especially if people are sharing snacks or bringing snacks to games. And shared equipment. This one's super important too, because if you're playing baseball and you guys are all using the same baseball bat, all of your fingers are on it and you don't know what other people have eaten. Great job, guys. So down below it says, always be prepared. What does always be prepared mean? Write your answer in the question box. What do you think always be prepared means? Always care. Someone says, always carry your EpiPen. Very, very, very true. I think that's so important. We need to make sure that we have our EpiPens with us all the time. Just in case something were to happen, we have our EpiPen there to help us. Someone else says, bring your own snacks. That is very true too. Because sometimes when you go to a game or you're out of practice, people will bring snacks without ingredients. You, by, by bringing your own snacks, you know the snacks that you're having are safe for you. So when I said washing your hands is, you, is also very important. I also think that's super important because it really stops um, if somebody had something from you getting it on you. So washing your hands very often is so key. And someone else says, always having your EpiPens close by. I love that. There is no leaving your EpiPen at home, ever. You need to bring it with you all the time. Great job, guys. So some other things that can be included can be checking labels and avoiding may contain foods. Love that guys, you guys are doing awesome. So guys, here's a question for you. Just raise your hand. Do you have your EpiPen auto injector with you when you're doing a sport or activity? Raise your hand if you do. Great job, guys. So many of you guys raised your hand. That's exactly what I want to hear. Just because you're going to an activity doesn't mean that you can't have your EpiPen on you. It's important to have your EpiPen auto injector on you at all times, no matter what you're doing. So my question for you guys, write your answer in the question box. Where can you keep your EpiPen when you're using your EpiPen for at an activity? So when it's there with you, where can you keep it? 
So where can you guys keep it during a sport? Some sports including swimming, golf, dancing, hockey, skiing. Where can we put it? So someone says my parents hold it. Very great. Oh, somebody put on your leg holster. I like that. That's very cool. Somebody else said on their waist. Love that. Great to have it on you guys just in case anything were to happen. Um, someone else said wear it. Perfect. Awesome to keep it on you. I do completely understand during, during sports like swimming, it may be super difficult to actually keep your EpiPen on you, like physically on you at all times, because you really don't want to get your EpiPen wet, right? But keeping it with your coach, keeping it with your parent is another way to make sure that your EpiPen is still close by. Awesome, guys. Great job. So this is a story that I want to tell you guys about a time I forgot my epinephrine. So I was going to a basketball game, and I didn't notice until halfway through the game that I forgot it at home. And this experience made me feel very anxious because I, want, I needed it with me. And not having it with me made me worry about if something were to happen. So what I learned through this experience was to always double and triple check before I leave the house that I have my epinephrine on me at all times. Okay guys, poll question. So what would you have done in my situation? So select one of the following guys. Would you leave and go home? Call or ask my parents to bring it, keep playing, or maybe something else. Ah. Uh. Awesome. So a bunch of you guys did say to ask your parents to bring it. That's awesome. So in my situation, I asked, I actually called my sister and asked her to bring it. So we're right on the money there. And some of you guys also said to leave and go home. I know that could be frustrating because you're playing a game, but you also need to keep in mind your health comes first. And if somebody isn't able to bring it to you, maybe you don't want to risk doing something without your EpiPen. Great job, guys. Okay, guys, so time for a game. This is called Allergy Wheel of Fortune. So what I'm going to do is slowly reveal letters of a special phrase. I'm going to do it slowly so you, you guys have time to really think about what could be in the word. I want you guys to type your guesses of what you think the phrase is in the question box. The first one to guess the correct phrase wins. You guys ready? Cool. Okay, so that's the phrase. Good luck, guys. It's a tricky. Oh, those are a couple letters. Anybody have it yet? Oh, great job, Keaton. Keaton wins. Great job, bud. Awesome. So, guys, the answer is 
have an allergy team. And after Keaton, followed by Julie and Colin. You guys were all so close. Great job. So guys, my question to you, what do you guys think have an allergy team means? Write your answer in the question box. Someone shared to have a team of people that have your back. I love that. To really have a support group. People that are going to stand with you and really understand what you're going through. Someone else said having people who can help you. I love that. So that means people that know you have allergies. That know what you're allergic to. That know where you can put your auto injector and that know where they can help you out. I love that. And someone else shared letting people be aware of your allergies and your EpiPen and be aware what people are eating around you. I love that guys. All are absolutely right. Every single one of you. Great job. So, it just be have an allergy team just basically means getting people on your side that understand you. So in order to have this team, you should be telling people that you have allergies. You should be telling people what you are allergic to, where you keep your auto injector and how they can help you out if anything were to ever happen. Great job. Okay, next question. Let's do a little bit of role playing. So if your coach were to say this, great game. I brought snacks for the whole team to celebrate. Let's eat. What would you tell your coach in this situation? If somebody, were, if somebody also wanted to try using their audio, taking themselves off mute and saying it to everybody, you can do that too. So if you guys want to try audio, so by talking through your speaker, just raise your hand. Okay, Connor, go ahead. Are they peanut free? Great. Thank you, Connor. How about Colin? Colin, what would you say to your coach? I have allergies. Are they safe? Love that. Great job, Colin. How about you, Jay? Um, I have I brought my own or no thank you. Love that. Perfect. All of your answers, guys, were absolutely right. So it's important to ask your coach or whoever's bringing the snacks if the food's safe for you. And if, it's, and if you don't feel comfortable taking the snack, don't take the snack. Just let your coach know that maybe you have your own snack to share. Love those. Does anyone else want to share anything? Nope. Okay, perfect. Thank you for everyone that contributed. 
Awesome. So guys, next poll question. Can famous athletes and artists have food allergies? Yes or no? Love you, this, guys. A hundred percent of you. So that means all of you said yes. And you're absolutely right. Just because we have allergies doesn't mean we can't become famous athletes and artists. We can do anything we want as long as you put your mind to it. Great job, guys. Okay, guys. Okay, guys. So next time, next thing we have is question time. So there are a little bit of rules. So rule number one: no parent questions, just kid questions. I want to hear from you guys. Number two: you can either type your question in the question box, or you can raise your hand to be unmuted over the phone just kind of like what we were doing before. Number three, keep your questions short and sweet. Number four, no medical advice. Sorry, guys. And number five, one question each. If we have time, maybe we'll do two. So we'll start it off. I'll read one of the ones that I was given before um, the session started today. So someone asked, what do you do if your teammates are eating a snack that you are allergic to? That's a great question. Thank you to whoever submitted that one. So guys, one option is to speak up and ask them to avoid it or eat it after the game. If it's too late, then I, you guys need to be cautious of contacting shared equipment, high five, et cetera. It's a good idea overall not to share water bottles or wash and wash hands after your activities. That way there's no cross-contamination. It's also, guys, such a good idea to let your coach know about your allergies at the beginning. That way, Everybody knows and everyone can help make it safer for you. So I see a couple of hands up. Pamela, would you like to say your question? Why, are, why isn't everything like free of your allergies? Food. Food. Thank you so much, Pamela, for the question. I think that one's an interesting question just because there's so much different food out there, right? And just because you can't eat something, maybe somebody else really likes that food. So it's really hard to make things absolutely allergen free. Because even though let's even though you might not like something, somebody else could like it. Or somebody else could not like something and you can like it. I would say that the most important thing is just to make sure that you're being safe and that you're eating the food that you know you can have. I hope that answers your question, honey. I see another hand up. Julie, would you like to share your question? Um. What if we're at a park with no, with no sinks and a friend had eaten something that I couldn't have? Okay, thank you, Julie, for asking that question. Um, so if you're at the park with your friend, I think it's super important for you, number one, to realize that your friend had eaten something that you can't eat. Maybe after that, you guys maybe don't want to share high fives or share like the same games that you're playing. You want to make sure if somebody had eaten something that you're not touching them. 
right? You guys can still have fun. You can still go on the swings. You can still go down the slides. You guys can still run around, but maybe you guys don't want to have any physical contact, especially if there's nothing um, to wash your hands. And then I would say the next important thing is to ask the person maybe to avoid the food entirely beforehand. I totally understand that people make mistakes, but if you ask your friend maybe not to eat your allergen before you guys see each other, that can really help the both of you be as safe as you possibly can when you're playing. Thank you for that question. I hope it answers it. All right, Julia, did you have a question? Oh, it's for George. Oh, it's Georgia. Oh, yes. Go ahead, Georgia. Um, have you ever gotten a little bit jealous because like, if your friends are eating something that you can't have? That's a good question. <laughs> um, it, you, I can definitely relate to that, seeing all my friends eating something and me not being able to eat it. But then also, I think what makes me not feel jealous is me actually not knowing what could happen, like what's in the food and if it's safe for me or not. I want to make sure I'm the safest. So I want to act, I want to eat the food that I'm able to eat. I hope that answers your question. Um... I see MJ with her hand up. Um, so let's say it's like reverse. What if there's somebody and you had the party and you were doing the food that they were allergic to? Oh, okay. So MJ, let me ask you a question back. How, let me ask all of you guys a question back. How would you guys relate to that? Because you guys have allergies. What's something that you guys could do to solve that? So something that I would do um, beforehand, I would definitely ask and see if anybody has allergies just so that I can make sure that I'm avoiding it. And then when I come to the, when I go to the party, you want to make sure that you're telling everybody what's in the food and re-asking everybody if anybody has allergies. And if somebody has an allergy, letting them know what's in your food. It's all about making sure, guys, beforehand what you're bringing, what's in it, and if it's safe for everybody. Great question. Love that, MJ. All right, um, Jay, is that your hand up? Um, what if you don't have your EpiPens with you and something happens? So I think the most important part to that question is to get help right away. I think we can all agree on that. We want to make sure that we always have our EpiPens on us. So making sure that we have it at home, double checking and triple checking before you leave the house. But you also want to make sure that if something were to happen, that you get help as soon as possible. So guys, what's, what's, help, what's the help number that we would call if something were to happen? So what number do we call in emergencies? Answer the question in the chat box or you can say it in your voice. Perfect, got a bunch of you guys saying 911. You're absolutely right. 911 is who we call in emergencies. Thank you so much for that question, Jay. All right. Julie, was your hand still up, honey, or did you did you have another question or no? No? Okay, perfect. 
All right, guys, if nobody has any other questions, I will continue. I'll answer one more question that I got. So I wear my auto injector around my waist in a pouch. What should I do if I'm told that I cannot wear it during an activity? Where should I keep it? Thank you so much for that question. That's a really good, that's a really good question. So the coach may not understand what it is and why you need it. So just letting them know what it is and why you need it and where you prefer to wear it may solve this problem. So just letting your coach know what it is and why it's important for you to keep it may, will help you so much. Like I was saying before though, some sports like swimming or gymnastics can make it very difficult to wear your epinephrine with you because you obviously don't want it to get wet or gymnastics you might be doing backflips and you don't want it to fall out um so there's some really really great belts guys that are really slim and can fit snug even under a t-shirt so it won't interfere with the sports that you're playing you also want to make sure that you've dedicated a really safe place so if your mom is watching you swim or play hockey, keeping it with your mom, or if your coach is, on, is right outside of the pool, or if he's on the ice with you, giving it to your coach. Those are other ways that you can make sure that your EpiPen is still close to you, very close to you, but maybe not exactly on you in those kinds of situations. So the last question I received was should I run with my auto injector? That's a really good question because I know some people really like to long distance run. You can totally run with your auto injector. It's totally up to you and your parents to make a plan for these kinds of situations. Again, there are some belts that are really great, really snug and will really benefit you in these situations so that you can still do all these activities and still have your EpiPen on you. Great job, guys. Very happy with all the questions you asked me. Thank you so much. So, guys, if you want to talk a little bit more about sports activities and more about how to handle these things with your food allergies, register for our eight-week Allergy Pals program. It's a great way to talk and to meet friends, just like we are all talking right now and talk about how we can handle situations with our allergies. Our sessions start next week, so it's super important that you sign on really quickly. I'm also leading one of the sessions, and they're so much fun, and you learn so much about how to be safe with your allergies. So guys, we'll talk about next month's session. The date's going to be on October 29th. The time's at 7 o'clock to 8 o'clock EST. And the topic is going to be Halloween and allergies. You can register for Allergy Pals monthly at foodallergycanada.ca slash events. So I want to thank everybody for joining me today. And I really hope you can make it to next month when we talk about managing food allergies at Halloween. Personally, I think food allergies at Halloween is such an important topic because everybody loves Halloween. There's still some time to sign up for our regular Allergy Pals or Allergy Allies programs this fall. They run for eight weeks and you'll get to interact with the same group throughout. It's a ton of fun. I want to give a special thanks to the University of Alberta for the original online mentorship program and TD Securities for their financial support. Lastly, please take a second to fill in our survey afterwards. We appreciate your feedback. Until next time, have a fun and safe month. Thank you all so much, and I will see you all next month.